It's not 2010. It's 2025. And I think the internet as we knew it is dying. In this video, we'll explore the current state of AI slop, algorithms, and the dead internet theory. Also, my new time machine, which appears later in the video as we step back in time to relive the golden years of the web. So before we relive those golden years of the web, let's take a look at what the internet is in 2025. Let's start with the slop. Slop can be AI generated or made by humans, and you know it when you see it. It's the endless torrent of low effort content engineered to hold your attention as much as possible while they generate ad revenue and drive views. It might be one of those cooking websites littered with ads, descriptions, and recipes that just don't make any sense. Or a website that seems to have the exact answer to your very specific question, until you realise that the heading of the website is the exact input you put into Google, and the whole site is just AI junk with no useful information at all, but it's posing as a normal site. Or perhaps it's video content that you see on Shorts or TikTok, whether human-made, often assisted by AI, or entirely AI. It's the recycled audio, fake stories, and AI narrators just slapped over trending footage that are meant to farm engagement and revenue. It's addictive noise, and the noise generates money. And if you'll indulge me in a bit of angst, we just sit there and scroll through it brainlessly. Or maybe it's not brainless, and we're knowingly using it as a distraction from other things. Next, we've got algorithms and AI zero-click content. So much of what we see is controlled by closed source software that only the owner knows the inner workings of. On Google, we're being conditioned to just reference an AI summary, which is an unverified and often very low quality set of information pulled from any indexable source, human made or AI slop alike. On Facebook, I opened a blank account on a phone that has never had Facebook installed, and the default algorithm was full of AI generated posts, right wing propaganda, and provocative videos of women. So it's garbage by default. These algorithms are set up to hold our attention, and the only data Facebook had on me is that I'm a 31-year-old man from Melbourne, Australia. And what does it do? It shows me far-right propaganda and women in shorts. And the second I start interacting with the content, it'll instantly learn what I respond to, positively or negatively. Because it doesn't matter, so long as I'm engaging, it's working. It's well known that Facebook actively feeds you content it knows will outrage you, because it knows you'll start arguing in the comments. Bots are also prolific, whether they exist just to drive engagement, or they're strategically trying to sway public opinion on important topics. It's a dystopia, and it's not just Facebook, it's everywhere, and it exists because we let it. A lot of this leads into the dead internet theory. The theory goes that most of the internet is AI-generated content interacted with by AI bots. It's a hypothesis for why so much of the internet feels fake and soulless. We're definitely not there yet, but it is only getting worse. So this is what so much of the internet is in 2025. It's a far cry from what it was. So, let's take a breath, unplug, and relive what the internet was like in its golden years, thanks to my Raspberry Pi Wayback Machine proxy. But before we do, let's look at one real website, PCBWay, this video sponsor. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printing, and more. They do it all. So if you've got an idea and a project, head onto their website for an instant quote. Enter your specifications and follow the prompts to make an order. PCBWay's 11th badge design contest has finished and winners have been announced. Congratulations to all who took part. Stay tuned for more like this. And thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Check them out via the link in the description. So here it is. This is seriously cool stuff. I followed a guide to set up my Raspberry Pi as a Wayback Machine proxy. It connects to the internet via Wi-Fi, routes traffic via the Wayback proxy, and then uses a bridge to share that proxy via Ethernet. So I can plug in any machine to the Raspberry Pi via Ethernet and have a direct connection to the web as it was on almost any date that I set. It's so fun to play with, and since you can set the exact date, you can browse the web with these old machines like it would have been on release day. Of course, not everything works, and many media links are broken, but it still hits that nostalgia spot. And notice as we explore these sites, they feel real. They feel like someone real has made them and is updating them behind the scenes. And it's because they were. Especially as we dial the clock back to the late 90s and early 2000s. It's just so authentic. It's what I remember the web to be, and I miss it. We'll never get back to this, but reliving it hits the spot for now. If you're interested in doing this, you don't even need a Raspberry Pi. 
you can head over to the Wayback Machine via the link in the description to visit your favourite sites, but in the past. These are echoes, and there's not a lot of use doing it other than to escape the endless supply of sloth that we're exposed to in 2025. And if this speaks to you on some level, maybe you'll consider being a bit more mindful of what you're allowing yourself to be exposed to. I don't mean for that to sound preachy, and I do appreciate you putting up with my angsty takes on the modern web throughout this video, I just want people to think a bit, and remember what things used to be like. And if you're too young to remember, well, this was it. Going onto the internet to browse the web used to be purposeful. It would be to answer a question, to look something up, to watch a specific piece of content that you already had in mind. It was great. So that is it for this video, thanks for joining me on this trip down memory lane, see you in the next one.